In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus, Mary, St. Joseph, St. Teresa, pray for us, and St. James the Apostle, pray for us. He's martyred in, or he's buried in Spain. So, this is wonderful, the stuff you learn about. But anyway, my, uh, you know, I went to this uh, John and Carol Leary Zoom conference yesterday, and I just highly recommend so much that you go to these because they're so consoling and liberating in such a godless world we live in now. I can't tell you, my walls are literally shaking with the devil. And it's difficult times we live in, but it's also glorious and wonderful times. We just have to piece it together, just like Father said today at Mass. You know, you will be persecuted. You will suffer for the cross. You will suffer for speaking the gospel truth. And I know there's a lot of, especially priests, who have visions or they have... Uh, they preach the gospel and then all of a sudden they're canceled or something and they can't make sense of it and they're stuck in this this kind of legal system that's against them and, and all this that we have to pray because many stars and the stars of the priests will fall from their faith and it says that in revelations a third of the sky will fall what is the stars the stars of the priests right and we have to pray very very much for the priests i hear that all the time from jesus Pray for the priest. Look what they're doing to me, Anna. He says that so much, and my heart is just breaking in two. How can a priest betray you, Lord? I mean, I'm just a simple little, you know, a sinful lay person trying to get through, right? Stepping on thorns along the way, seeing my own weaknesses, grabbing on to the will of God for dear life sometimes wondering where the will of God is feeling a little lost all these things and seeing the evil it's like how can a priest do this to you they've given their life to you but they get carried away they get led astray just like we do and they're so tempted now and it's the world in the church it's remember St. Michael's word apostolate when the, when the world and the church are one know that the end is near and I don't say it's the end of time it's the end of an era and like I said I felt this new era coming a couple days ago and then uh, John and Carol Leary they're very fervent now in saying that we really gotta hunker down and get ready we may even only have a few months before this World War three really explodes and like I've given this uh, understanding and Maybe it's from St. Patrick himself. I just see the St. Patrick over there on my wall. Thank you, St. Patrick. He drives the snakes out of Ireland. Boy, do we need you now. <laughs> but, uh, I forget where I was going with this. The World War III, I see these, um, you know, in the consecrations, I see these dust from the nukes. And they, God will allow nukes to strike the U.S. unfortunately in this next World War III and that's my feeling and that's what a lot of the seers and prophets are speculating. Do I know the future? No. I'm just reading from what I uh, from what I know and just kind of the kind of instinct I sort of feel about it. But I think it's also written in the Holy Face and we know we cannot God cannot contradict himself, and what says in scripture is true for all time, right? We will be going to tribulation, there will be an antichrist, he's already on earth, people say, and, uh, and this is only a matter of time. So, I saw, <laughs> I saw like a square in his face, and I was wondering what this was, and it's a refuge. Maybe it's not a perfect square or something, but his face is a refuge. It's land consecrated during this time. I saw a refuge. It was so consoling. Wow, thank you, our Lord. And then around it, I saw evil. You can see the evil, but the protection, right? It's a spiritual protection. So there's not, it's spiritual. There's no, you know, there's nothing there because it's spiritual but also but I see all the habit going around the, the refuge is secure thank you our Lord so just remember that the refuge is secure we're gonna need a lot of trust and faith how do I get a lot of trust and faith well you gotta ask the Lord to give it to you because it's a grace and the grace 
is through through prayer and fasting but just it's a grace i mean you ask for the grace and hope you hope that you get that he will answer your prayer right so i saw the holy ghost on the holy face's forehead i saw the holy ghost they are like a dove like right there i saw like god the father reflection and god the father this is the sons and the remember the father's not in flesh that's all the reflection because it's a perfect he's a perfect mirror image of the father right uh Psalm 91. Oh, what does this say? Uh, yeah, so the Larrys are, are, and also Lorena, the prophecy of Lorena, asks that we read Psalm 91 because it's very encouraging. And the green scapular prophecy of Anna Marie, she would like us to pray for courage. <laughs> That's lovely. I love that. The holy face is like a square, a refuge plot. I saw a monarch butterfly in his cheeks yeah i saw it with the whole you know the dots on the monarch butterfly and it does really look like a butterfly i don't know if the butterfly symbol it could be new life or so i love seeing butterflies like that you know so it's just joy and hope and encouragement for us in these times and the hair oh wait i already saw this the divine angels protection yes I'm just looking at my notes. They're kind of all over the place. I saw Jacob's ladder on his holy face. I saw Jacob's ladder. Now I'm trying to understand where I saw it. I saw some sort of ladder on his holy face. I kind of see two ladders now. I see one got kind of going this way and then one going this way. Maybe they can go up and down. But I think I saw a different way another time. But I'm sure maybe you can see some some other things and some ladders and stuff it, the, the Jacob's ladder wonderful I love this so have hope get your refuge ready you we don't have a lot of time and uh, and do that chaplet of divine mercy but I know I'm a broken record right now I can't say it enough to get to confession an honest confession not a fake one we need real God didn't shed fake blood. There wasn't ketchup coming out of him. There was blood. We got to shed our blood too in confession. We got to give our heart to Jesus in confession. We, he doesn't need any more, any more superficiality. He's got enough of that, doesn't he, right now? And there's the world is so superficial now, we don't even know what genuine means anymore. We don't know what it means to be to be to charitable or have the love. So we need to reinvent ourselves through the grace of God. Have him purify us. Like John and Carol Leary said, we will be going through. The tribulation will be a form of a purgatory for us on earth. It will be a purification. And anyone who says they don't need the purification is a liar. We all need it. Priests think they're above the lay people. They're not. They're given a special mission, but they're not above the missions that God has called to each one of us and how we combine in the body of Christ, in our soul, which lives forever and can either go to heaven or hell. That's so important for a priest to be humble. And how do they be humble? They, first of all, they're chaste and they remove themselves from society. They don't get in party rooms. They have to be removed, right? Because they're consecrated. What does sacred mean anyway, anymore? They have to be in prayer. They do divine mercy at 3 o'clock. They value our Lord in the Eucharist. They want to do Mass. They want to be in confession, do confessions all the time. They're, they're very much guarded and protected by Blessed Virgin, who they consecrate themselves to. They carry a rosary and say it all the time. They live in poverty more than the lay people. They are poorer than the lay people. Not something that's just been thrown away, and it's a tragedy. They don't, maybe even they don't drive. They don't, they take, they make sacrifices. They don't have comforts and luxuries like we have. That's what they're supposed to do. We have to pray very much for them. You know, 
anyway, so back to what I was saying, the confession, very important. To become Catholic is wonderful and good thing. Baptize, baptism, sacraments, all this. And to study those prophecies, because there's so much evil and wickedness going on in the church, you don't know right from wrong anymore. So I kind of worry about new converts. Well, how are they going to know what's right and wrong? How are they going to know? Don't do communion in the hand. Don't get on that altar if you're a girl. I mean, it, there's so much confusion. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, we're at a point where only God can truly save the world. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's, let's get in the womb of Blessed Mother and trust ourselves to her and be part of her foot. I see she's collecting her army right now. We're all going to be with her in the little foot as she stomps out the devil.